SIG Sounder. It's a brand new rifle out from SIG. It's the Cross. We're going to talk all about it. Hang tight and watch the video. America! What's up guys? It's been a long time. I've gotten fatter and gotten a longer beard. We've been out. It's been probably a year or more since we made a video. Things have been crazy in the gun world and uh, just hadn't gotten out here. Plus it's hot as hell uh, in Texas in the summertime or it's freezing cold in the winter and you never want to come out, but it's a nice fall day today. At any rate, you don't want to hear about me. We're here to talk about this new cross rifle. You guys may or may not know, but SIG is getting into the bolt gun game with these things. Uh, they're a chassis platform. This one's in 6.5 Creedmoor. They also come in 308 or their, uh, their new round, the 277 Fury. Uh, it's pretty neat. You probably want to read about that online. It's an interesting deal. Uh, it's your typical bolt gun and uh, it's threaded for suppressor. It is what it is. So we're going to take it up close on it and we'll talk about the details. So here she is in all her glory. As you can see, we'll start at this end. They have a stainless barrel that's 18 inches. It has, we have a dead air nomad on the end of it, but obviously you wouldn't have that unless you were to put it on yourself. It is a threaded gun. It has a Magpul m -lock style connector on the rail itself. We have a little bipod on there. That's one of the Magpul bipods. It is obviously a bolt action gun. Something that's really great is it takes Magpul AICS magazines, so you're not going to have to hunt for, you know, weird SIG proprietary magazines. It does have a two-stage match trigger on the gun with a pistol grip, and it's got a big ball on the end of the bolt, which makes it a little bit more comfortable. The stock does fold right there at that joint, if you can see it. That's as much as I can zoom. But right there at that joint, the, the stock is going to fold, and then it's got adjustable cheek piece and length of pull. They call this their SIG Precision Stock. It's a one in eight twist rate on the barrel down here. Again, this is in 6.5. So that's the twist rate on the 6.5 gun. And I think that's about it as far as details go. It's a pretty good looking rifle. Uh, I can just tell you how it feels. It's a light gun. It's really comfortable to hold and it's not real front heavy or anything like that. So it ought to be a pretty good shooter. All right, so as we just checked out, it's a pretty cool rifle. This is Tay, I don't know if I've introduced Tay, but he works with us at the store. This is his gun. He got one of the early ones uh, from, from SIG. They, they haven't released a whole lot of these, so I don't know how early we are in the process, but I think we're fairly early. At any rate, we're gonna sit down, do some fun stuff. We're just gonna target shoot, see how close we can get it. And then after that, we're going to do other fun stuff like coconuts and uh, eggs and different things that we have. What we're running today is Federal Premium Gold Medal Match, uh, Sierra Match King Bullet in 140 grain. And so that's what we're going to be throwing down there and see. Uh, I haven't read up on what exactly is optimal for a 1 in 8 twist. Uh, I have a Bergara that I run uh, 147 grain in, but I, I don't think that that's going to make a, a whole lot of difference. Uh, at any rate, this is always good stuff. Any of the federal gold medal match stuff is, is always good ammo. So we're going to have a good time, see what happens. All right, so we're going to let Tay run it. What you think, Tay? That's a nice rifle. Um, really one of the better rifles out there for the price range you're at. Um, nothing too crazy, nothing too custom, but it's a really good rifle. Uh, let's put some uh, rounds down range now. Okay, go for it. What are you shooting for? Dead target, dead center. All right, so he's going to run the center.
One of the things you notice when he's running it, that Nomad makes a lot of difference. The, it's a pretty loud gun without a suppressor. But uh, a minute ago we were shooting it, I took my ear pro off just to see how bad it was. And it did induce a little bit of ring, but nothing like what you expect it to if you weren't running that can. Well, let's go down and take a look at the target. All right, so you get kind of a bonus here because uh, Tay and I shot just a little bit before we started making the video. But this was kind of the original group that Tay was running. He tightened it up a little bit with his optic. Uh, this was me the first time out. You can see that we got two touching each other. Uh, so this is definitely a sub-MOA gun. And these are Tay's last rounds. You'll notice here on the last round, this is two rounds together because it's, you know, it's ragged on that side. So we basically one-hold it there which is pretty nice for a, for a relatively inexpensive production rifle. All right, so we got a couple of watermelons, oranges, coconut eggs, and a few pumpkins, you know, holiday season, Halloween's around the corner. Um, we're gonna take a couple shots on them and just have some fun shooting, blowing up fruits. Let's do it. Which one are you shooting? I'll uh, probably go for the watermelon on the far left. Excellent choice. Flip it uh, to fire first. Might help. <laughs> We're just extra safe around here. Extra safe for the internet safety police. We don't get nasty comments on the YouTube. Oh, that was a monstrous explosion of a watermelon for a 6.5. That's pretty cool. That's bigger than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. What you after now? Let's go for the... Oh, the coconut's gone. What you going for? I'm going for that egg. That orange, like dead center. Okay. Did you get it? It's not there anymore. Yep, must have exploded. <laughs> this is exciting. It is. <laughs> you may not get the safety police, but we're gonna get the pump police definitely. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's some extraordinary shooting you got going there. <laughs> I am very excited. <laughs> All right, what's next? <coughs> COVID. Let's go for the coconut in the top left side. All right, bust it. I think you got it. Yep. Is there any more eggs left? Uh, any more eggs, let's see. I think all of the eggs have fallen off. Yeah, there's no eggs. What you going after? There's an apple uh, on the right side. So it goes co coconut, pumpkin, apple. I'll go for the apple. I jerked that one. Ah, uh, you missed. Sometimes we miss here at Mr. Guns. I don't know if you've seen my other videos. My Glock 34 video, I missed like everything in the beginning and got horribly made fun of on the internets. Try this one more time. One more time. I nicked that apple. There you go. Got it that time. Got it that time. And I'm out. You empty? I'm empty. All right. Let's see me do some shoot. All right. So we're going to get it nice and comfy. I'm going to get myself situated before we close the bolt so that that way nobody has an aneurysm on the internet. 
I'm gonna uh, take off my glasses and turn my hat around backwards. Remember like over the top with Stallone when it gets serious when you turn the hat around, right? <laughs> that's what's what's go, go going on right now. All right, let's see what we got here. Looks like I got a couple. I got a pumpkin and I've got some, uh, I've got like a remaining orange and a coconut. There's a watermelon. Watermelons are always fun. Let's do that. Go All right. It. Well, watermelon ain't what I'm after first, though. What do we have, five in this magazine? Yes, sir. All right, let's do it. Okay, she is ready to roll. And now I can't find it again. Let me get situated. I know I'm cheating with the sandbags a little bit, but it sure helps us stay steady. All right, there it is. All right, I'm gonna go for a uh, top right pumpkin. Top right, let's see it. I don't know, there's a mark. I mean, I don't know if I hit it or if I didn't. It's playing tricks on you, trick or treat. I don't know, we'll have to see when we get down there. I'm gonna leave it. All right, we're going after coconuts now. Oh, let me get situated. I do considerably more wiggling than you do. <laughs> All right, coconut. I hit it, it's just not, I say I hit it, everybody might laugh at me in a minute, but it looks like it had a dark spot on the end. See, this is, what do you call it? Suspenseful. I'm either gonna be really embarrassed or there's gonna be nice clean holes. All right, I'm shooting at the bottom right coconut next to the watermelon. So we went down there to look, and sure enough, I was hitting the uh, little pumpkin and the and the little coconut and all that. But I guess the bullet was moving so fast it just ripped right through. So that uh, saved me from extraordinary embarrassment there. Another pumpkin. But uh, at any rate, uh, we did have a little uh, technical glitch there where we did not record me hitting the last couple shots. I recorded another section where we were shooting the watermelon and the orange next to it. Uh, and I didn't, I made a mistake and our second camera was not recording. So maybe I'll tack that on to the end as a blooper reel or something. Uh, but we're going to shoot at about 170 yards and see what's up with that. Uh, and then we'll shoot a little bit more. Okay, so I've got another set of stuff, uh, steel about 170 yards out. I don't have a camera on it, but we're just going to listen for the ding when we hit it. There's almost no change in your holdover on uh, 200 yards. These six fives are so flat. There's a couple inches of difference, uh, but it's not much, so you don't have to hold a whole lot, which is one of the things that I like about it. I bought my son a six five Creedmoor so that he would not have to deal with as much uh, you know, dealing with bullet drop and all that. I wanted something that's nice and flat. He, he's a little bit too small for a 7 mag or 300 wind mag or something. So 6.5 is a great caliber if you want something that's nice and flat. Alright, I'm going to take a shot at some steel out here. About, like I said, about 170 yards and see what happens. Yep, you hear it hit. I don't know if y'all heard that, but it's about a 4 inch piece of steel uh, out at about 170. Hey guys, see, I'm, uh, I'm fairly new at this. I'm not really the long range shooter that everybody probably thinks I am. Um, so it's really cool to have a gun that pretty much anybody who's new to it, new to long range, can take out, get it set up, and actually shoot at least at 500 yards and actually hit something. So that's what we're going to do right now.
That's a miss. Yep, heard the ding. There you go. Magic 500. Oh, he's got more. You want more? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. You good? In, in it with the one good shot. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Ended on a high note. Like ACDC should have done before they released this last album. Oh, God, yeah. So I have to say, I'm impressed with the little cross -like rifle. Uh, I've run other stuff, uh, more expensive stuff, and uh, this thing shoots just as good as, as just about anything. What's the price point on this thing? I think we got it set right at. $14.99 for the six for a rifle like this obviously without the nomad and the scope on it I think we got it right about $15.99 $14.99 right around there somewhere in that range don't hold us to it because depending on when you're watching this video the price may be different but that lets you know that it's kind of in that area we're running Leopold Mark IV on here uh, they don't make the Mark IV series anymore uh, but we just had this laying around any of your other optics are going to be fine you know, I'd at least go with like a Viper series or something. You, you know, Diamondback Tactical from Vortex be all right on this, I guess. But I would probably go with the Viper series or one of the, like, uh, Leopold, uh, the Mark V series are better. But uh, at any rate, it's a great little gun. It's super light for 1400 bucks. You know, if you're into, if you end up with a chassis gun like this and adjustable cheek welds and, and uh, this, the ergonomics that it has, it has the, that dual stage match trigger in it so you really get a lot uh, for the money i mean if regara is in that range and you definitely get a nice stock with a cheek weld and all that uh, but you know typically speaking a chassis gun is going to usually be a little more if you go to a regara chassis gun you're pushing up well past this price point uh, as with with most other people's uh, and you know for a guy like tay like he was saying he's relatively new to run in distance and I, I realize 500 yards isn't uh what a lot of people would consider ultra long range but it's a pretty damn long shot and if you uh you know this gun will easily do it six five creedmoor that's another thing is you know i grew up running 308 and six five creedmoor is uh i don't know how long it's been out but it's been really popular for a relatively short period of time i gotta say I was, you know, I assumed it was like a hipster thing or something and kind of made fun of the fanboys until I started running the 6.5 Creedmoor and it's a great round. It's one of my favorites. It's really nice and flat shooting, but you don't kick your teeth in like you do with a 300 Win Mag or something else that has similar flat ballistics. So what do you think? It's a, it's a great buy. Um, anybody who wants to get into long range, wants to get a semi-custom built gun off the production line with with a little more work into it, you can make it just as good as any custom rifle in the higher price points. But it's a great gun, as is straight off the factory uh, factory line. It's, it's a great gun. Yeah, we're impressed, man. I mean, for SIG to release their first real bolt gun uh, at, at that great price point, it's pretty hard to beat. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching the video. And, uh, you know, like, subscribe, all that other stuff. And uh, follow us on Facebook. We're going to have a nice new e-commerce site coming here pretty quick. Uh, so, you know, keep up with us, man. We always got something weird going on, but uh, you guys take it easy. All right, so I was, in fact, hitting the coconuts and the pumpkins and that kind of stuff. Uh, and we went down there to check it out. There's definitely holes in them, so at least I'm not crazy. That would have been uh, extraordinary. It's extraordinarily extraordinary. I can't say it. <laughs> extraordinarily. Embarrassing, but get start over. Don't start over. You took on everything. All right, hang on, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs>